Hi, Year 11s or nearly uh, sixth formers, Year 12s. Um, today, I'm just going to go over a few basic principles of the A-Level Mindset, which is a system that we've used in sixth form for three, four, um, possibly longer years now, that has undoubtedly changed the way that sixth formers think and how they succeed, um, and indeed has really benefited them in their end exams and their future careers. It's a bit of a life-changing, that sounds a bit dramatic, but it is a little bit of a life-changing um, thing because it does believe, it makes you think and believe in yourself in a different way um, or to be successful. The slides that I'm going to talk through should complement the um, tasks that you've got in your booklet three um, and obviously just email me if you've got any questions but I thought it was important that I gave you a little bit of verbal explanation about it because um, obviously this would have been normally covered in transition time if you'd have been able to come into college. So first of all, before we continue, you don't need to write this down anywhere, but if I said to you very quickly, give me one word to describe your year 11 experience. And I'll pause there. Um, now, obviously, you had a, a, a halted experience in your year 11, but it could have been good. You're the word, the one word could have been good. It could have been um stressful, it could have been horrible. So just try and think generally of your year 11 experience. Were you hopeful? Um, were you excited? Some people do like um, stress and exams. Um, so one word to describe your year um, 11 experience. And then if I had to ask you to describe one word, what you think your sixth form experience will be like. Now, this is quite interesting because we do a really good activity um, when you come in for transition, but obviously we can't do that, just sat there on your own. Um, and we get you to think one word and that ranges from, uh, again, excited, nervous, um, anxious, um, because it is a step. It is a huge step um, to sixth form, even though you're going to be with familiar teachers, um, familiar setting, it is a huge academic step. So if that one word that you're coming back with in your mind is oh, you're frightened, you're anxious, then you are in very good company. Um, it's completely understandable and normal. And the VESPA programme that we're going to be looking at helps you get through that and helps to see that those are absolutely normal feelings. Um, and it's a very, very simple system that we follow. Um, and in the next 10, 15 minutes or so, I'll be explaining how um, your mindset, if you are prepared to make it change, how you will then succeed um, in the end. So the whole VESPA program was set up by two head of sick form teachers. Um, Martin Griffin and Steve Oakes, who I've actually met. Um, and in 2016, they did a huge bit of research suggesting that past performance didn't seem to guarantee future performance at post-16 studies. So some of you will undoubtedly do very well in your GCSEs and you've worked hard. Um, and you would think, or uh, a lot of people think, that naturally you will be brilliant at A-levels. And equally, there'll be some of you that are listening to this that will do well in their GCSEs. They've got the entry requirements to do A-levels. And you're thinking, oh, I'm never going to get an A or a B at A-level because I'm an OK student. And actually what their research, Oakes and Griffin research proved was actually it wasn't so much, um, there was no correlation between, or there was very little correlation between you did brilliantly at GCSE um, to then doing brilliantly at A-levels. What they did find, however, is obviously you've got to have academic knowledge, um, but the factors that determine success were the student's habits, so how you study, your routines, your positive attitude, and your approaches to study. So it was the characteristics and the mindset that proved whether you were going to be that successful person at A-level. Yes, you do need to have that academic knowledge but, and understanding, but equally, um, if you're sat there and you're going to come back with four or fives at GCSE, there is every possibility if you have the right mindset that you will absolutely get an A or a B at A level. Mindset at doing A levels, and I include BTECs within that, um, is a completely different mindset to GCSE. There's independent learning, um, you need a lot of resilience. So all of that, helps you make 
to be a successful student. Now, this was really interesting, and I ran a staff development session on it a while ago, and I think teachers, our own teachers at HCC, started to think, yes, there were some students that came on to A-levels. We didn't really think that they were going to get the highest grades, and they did. And equally, students that came out top at GCSE, they coasted through A-levels and they didn't come out with those end grades that we expected them to have. So to summarise that, it is a mindset and to get your mind to think in a different way. So some of the characteristics, and I think we did this in session one, that you need to have or you need to develop, certainly in some of these you already have, to be successful as a level three student, so A levels and B techs, are some of the following. Um, perseverance, resilience and, and, and grit. It makes you sound like a fighter, doesn't it, that? Um, it's hard. A levels are the hardest time subjects that you will probably experience in your academic career. And I think you, you, you could ask any teacher that and they would agree with me on that. Um, yes, degrees are obviously obviously hard, but A levels are probably going to be the most demanding with everything else that's going on in your life um, at the time. So there will be set, setbacks. Um, you will put 20 hours of effort into that essay and then come back with two out of 20. And how do you actually have a positive attitude and say, OK, that didn't go so well. How can I get better next time? And that's hard. Um, confidence, you, all of you that um, achieve your GCSE grades and you come to sick form, should have the confidence that your place is secure. You earned that place because of the hard work that you put in with um, GCSEs. It's about having that vision of what this next two years will then take you um, forward towards. Motivation, drive and ambition. Yes, similar. Um, and it's hard at the moment in the time that we're going through to have that motivation. And I'm very much hoping that as soon as we get back to normal, we can start um, kick driving that as well. Tolerance and respect. Um, between the age of 16 and 19, there's loads of other things that are going on in your life. You're learning to drive, possibly. A lot of you have got jobs. Um, you, relationships are happening. Um, all of that and actually people change. And we go on to that in one of the tasks um, later on, looking at friendship groups. Um, but it's all about respecting other people. You have a different kind of relationship with your teachers in sixth form. Um, you are treated like an adult unless you behave otherwise. So you, you will find that difference. And it's all about tolerating other people, respecting other people for who they are. Honesty, integrity and dignity. Yes, um, honesty within the centre. Um, we have that um, relationship, integrity. Um, we call it emotional intelligence as well. And again, we hit upon that um, later on. Conscientious, curiosity and focus. Are you curious about your subject? And hopefully session two taught you that actually the more curious, the more interested, the more conscientious you are about your studies, the more likelihood that you're going to succeed. So those were just a few of the characteristics and we'll mention those as, as we go through. So the whole VESPA process is set on the um, five areas that we're going to split up now. Vision. Do you know what you want to achieve? Is that short term, long term, medium term goal? But to have a vision helps you with your success, your mindset. Effort, how many hours of proactive independent study? Um, the, the existing sick formers will probably say she says that all the time, but I do say it all the time. A levels, B techs do not just fall into your lap. There will be some of you there that have coasted through GCSEs that have done probably by your own admissions, probably minimal study to the point where we halted you, but uh, minimal study um, and still achieving fantastic uh, results. That does not happen at post 16 to get the A grades, to get the A star grades, the Bs, the Cs, to get any grade, um, to be honest with you at A level, you need to put the hours in. People who do not work, doesn't matter how intelligent you are, will not get the grades. 
Systems, you need to be very organized. Now, we spend a lot of time on systems and practice because it's very key. Time moves very, very quickly at A-level. Um, so it's really important from day one that we get you organized. Um, some people are brilliant at it. Uh, I think some people in the past, the sick formers have actually sold their time to other students that aren't very good at it to, to help them get organized, but we can go on to that. And then finally, attitude. You respond constructively to setbacks. There are going to be setbacks. Um, there's going to be a bit of a shock coming to some students of, gosh, that's completely different from GCSE. It's not what I thought. So actually, this enhanced step up programme, I'm hoping, will give you a real insight into um, what's going to happen and how exciting um, it, it should be. So vision, if we move on to vision. What is a vision? It's knowing the outcomes of what you want to achieve. Now, some of you will have a very clear vision of I want to be a doctor. I want to be an architect. I want to go and do an apprenticeship. I want to travel. And that's brilliant. However, if you're sat there thinking, I don't know what I want to do, that's equally um, is OK. But over the next few weeks, months, while you're sat there uh, wondering what to do with your time, maybe have a think and have a go at the following exercises in, the more, in a minute, which may give you a little bit more of an idea of what, you, what your vision is going to be. Again, the research shows if you have a vision, um, whether it's a long term one, whether it's a short term one, you are more likely to, to succeed. And it says there, research shows that setting a goal which is specific and challenging leads to productivity. So it gives you something to aim, aim for. So we set the goal, we plan how we're going to achieve it, and then we actually um, do it. Um, various other researchers around vision and aims and targets, but this is basically um, what it's all about, is having that um, confidence and vision to say, actually, this is this is my vision. Some people get very embarrassed about what, what their vision is. It's OK. Ha have your vision. That's absolutely fine. Just want to mention briefly push and um, pull goals. And I'll use an example of an ex-student. I'm sure I won't name names in case um, any of you know him. But we separate your goal um, or your vision into push and pull. What's what's a pull goal? It's a goal set by another person. Um, it could be your parents, could be your friend, could be your grandparents, could be your teacher. It could be somebody else that's pushing you towards um, a goal. And if you if, if this goal is met by resistance, i.e. you, you don't really want to do that you often fail um, and you don't succeed. Whereas if the goal is a pull one, so it's set by you as the individual, um, you are likely to have higher attendance, engagement and ultimately success. We had a student um, a few years ago now that his um, parents wanted him to go to university. Um, he was taking three A-levels, doing OK, but certainly not putting the effort in, um, slept in more often than coming to, to lessons, wasn't particularly engaged. And it got to the point at the end of year 12. And I said, this is the this is the make or break time, whether you stay or not, because you've not done very well in your mocks. Um, you're certainly not going to be going to university with those grades. What What is the problem? And he then opened up and he said he didn't want to go to university. It was his it was his parents idea. His elder sister had gone to university and they wanted him to go. And I said, what what do you want to do? He wanted to go into the army. I said, well, you need to discuss this with your parents. Anyway, cut a long, very, uh, very long story short. He he had the courage to tell his parents I didn't he didn't want to go to university. He wanted to go to the army. He came back in September uh, into year 13. I agreed to take him in back. And his character was completely changed because he'd gone from a push goal into a pull goal. He knew what grades he had to get to get into the army, which is exactly the same as the university, but his vision had changed. He was now setting his own goal. He had um, increased attendance and he ended up with three really good A-levels. He is now in the army. Um, that's just a very good example of where set your own goals be guided by others around you but actually don't give up on what your goals should be and that is very important okay moving on to the next slide 
So going back to your booklet, um, I'll get mine. So on page four to six, you will see there's three activities that I want you to work through. Now, bearing in mind, these are usually done whilst I'm in front of you, uh, whilst you are actually a sixth former. But I think some of these you should be able to have a real good go at. Either record your notes on your work booklet or you can write them down somewhere else, but we will revisit them in tutor time with myself in PDS um, and within your lessons. Most of the sixth form teachers have been had this session with myself, so they they joke about it that I'm I think if you cut me in half and I was like a stick of rock, I would have Vespa um, through me running through like a stick of rock. However, um, so they're fairly familiar with this, so they could well say to you, "What's your vision? Uh, let's go back to to the V in Vespa." And let's just focus. So have a go at them. I'm just going to briefly describe the activities to you um, so you can have a go yourself. So the first one is all about imagining yourself on your 21st birthday. And I think the instructions are fairly um, pretty standard. But so imagine you've gone through your A-levels, you've either gone to university, maybe you've got a job. Um, what do you want people to say about you on your 21st birthday? Um, and that's quite that's quite important. So you're thinking ahead um, five years. I just about to do my math. Um, so what what are you going to be doing? What would you have achieved by then? Second activity is fish, fix your dashboard. Dashboard relating to when you drive to or when you will be driving um, to college or to work uh, is something that you see in front of you. Um, so think of somebody or somewhere that inspires you, that you admire, that you respect. What qualities do they have? Um, and the third part of that activity is think about how you can get to achieve your dashboard with some no limit thinking skills. So this is letting your mind think, how am I going to get to be that person to that place? Now, that place could be uh, um, somewhere in the world that you've always wanted to travel. It could be a particular university. I've got a current student in, in year 13 that is very intent on going to one particular university. It's a very high achieving university. Every time they open up their diary um, for their um, schoolwork, they have a picture of that university. That's her dashboard. Um, so if it's a famous person, if it's your uh, relative, so if it's your mum or your dad that's um, inspiring you, have a picture of them maybe or mentally have it. So think about with no limit thinking skills how you can fix that dashboard. Now, uh, vision activities don't just happen overnight either. So I'm not expecting you to just do this quickly. Um, you can stop, you can pause, you can have a go at it. Um, you know, most sixth form students take weeks for, for them to, to have their vision. And then finally, SMART goals, which you may well have done with Mr. Skelding in the past, um, a SMART target. And I'm sure the sporty people of you will be very familiar um, with that. Um, but this is um, to actually target your goals to actually get them achieved. Um, so what I'd like you to do is identify a goal. It could be academic, personal, career focused, and then just fill out, try and fill out the chart underneath of um, what is it. So be specific. Um, how will you know when you've reached your goal? So if your, your goal was to achieve an A, for example, uh, in biology, how would you know when you've done it? What will be when you've got your grade at the end of the two years? How are you going to achieve the goal? Um, is it realistic um, and time bound? Um, my my smart goal eventually um, when I finish my world of work uh, would be hopefully to to retire to France like many of us um, mid mid age people. Um, so um, I guess I've got my own smart targets. Is it realistic? Not at the moment, not with the travel band. Um, but yeah, so that might, that's obviously my long term goal. But it's OK to have a short term, mid term or long term vision. OK, so moving on to effort. Effort is, as I put that, is a um, so fixed mindset. So students that aren't prepared to change their mindset, they work on this theory 
that um, no effort will still mean success. And as I've already said, A-levels don't happen like that. A-levels are hard. You've got to put the hours in if you want to achieve those grades at the end. On results day, I could probably predict most of the A-level results. So when students come in and they said, oh, I've got a D, those will be the students that probably haven't put the effort in. The ones that get the A's and the B's would have absolutely um, put every bit of effort into their study. 1985 is a bit of an old piece of research that the, um, but it has been carried on and it would have been superseded, but Bloom, a um, bit of a, and um, famous researcher researched that the discipline and willingness to put in great amounts of time and effort were significant factors in success and that's been replicated again and again so how do we grade effort you would have just completed your key stage four um, where the traditional way of measuring effort is you get set home learning homework um, your teachers would have checked up on you you work through a very um, structured curriculum um, so you get taught this you you do some home learning on it a levels broadens that independent study as we look at in a minute and it will undoubtedly have some differences and that will become more and more apparent as we go on. You will keep hearing this word independent learning throughout um, what we're talking about now and um, throughout your two years. So we split it into two. Reactive independent learning is what teachers set you to do. So it could be you've had a lesson for an hour. I want you to go away and answer this question or do this exam question um, that is reactive independent learning proactive independent learning is what you set yourself to do so this is where you get set a piece of work and then you think oh actually i'm going to research into that or i'm going to tie this news article into it and this is what i hinted at in session two is to be that overall rounded post 16 learner is you need to be proactive you've got to want to find out more about your subject um, you've got to be engaged in it and this is where lovely conversations when i'm doing learning walks um, around the school this is where i hear students post 16 students and this is what will be happening at university or when you get to the workplace you you are engaged in your subject and it's not a chore it's actually a joy to be talking about that subject that is part of being a successful learner so you independent learning we move away from the term home learning homework this is independent learning um, now with independent learning there's always going to be some blockers um, and again some of your teachers will uh, joke about frogs and banisters um, all of the time um, but this is again quite a well researched um, theory but frogs are going to be if you think about your list of things to do um, so your tasks whether it's schoolwork whether it's home stuff anything like that there will always be some tough unappealing tasks that are important but keep getting put off um, if i was on video i would very happily show you my list of things to do at the moment and there are some very horrid frogs in that list that i keep putting off because it's too easy just to put them to one side usually this is going to be your subject that you feel least confident in or the teacher that you don't particularly understand or you don't particularly like that much and it's like oh but i can assure you of something those frogs will stay there um, and they will always be there at what some point you're going to have to eat that frog and there's some various things miss hill is a very um good advocate of this you'll always say well you need to eat that frog um and she is absolutely right and you'll often see me shouting across the center are you going to eat that frog or are you going to slide down the banister which are the jobs that are unimportant but seem to get done first they're easier potentially so for an example if i had to write an essay or i just had to i don't know do a mind map the mind map is going to be the banister the essay is going to be the frog um, so we need to be able to work around these blockers again to be successful what we know is success so your ultimate success requires a large amounts of effort effort is measured in hours per week of independent learning 
and independent learning is a proactive process. You will not get spoon fed at A levels or BTEC at, at sixth form. Um, you will not you you will get reminded of it but actually time moves on very quickly um you've got to want to learn it is your choice that you're coming to sick form and we're really grateful and looking forward to you starting but this is your choice um and that's absolutely brilliant but you have got to want to learn to be there uh, you've got to want to learn about your subject you've got to want to engage in it um to be successful top performing students commit 20 actually it should say 20 to 30 hours per week to their studies now again i've hinted upon this in session one and session two so this is where um not your lessons i mean you will get a minimum of 12 hours of contact time per week <coughs> over three subjects um and the minimum is should be 12 hours of independent learning so roughly one hour in the classroom one hour outside and that will get you okay grades to be a top performing student um, you need to commit at least 20 plus hours of a mixture of um, independent learning that they've set you um, and proactive learning that you are going above and beyond to find out about your subject to be able to answer those big exam questions what do you know about that subject your broader knowledge so the effort activities there's a couple that i want you to have a go at and the first one i've tried to adapt to you that have just finished your gcses so it's asking you to look back at the work you did leading up to your gc exams and about the level of effort you put in i try and be honest on this one Use the scale above and the following guidelines to choose your number. So just grade yourself. If you thought, mm, yeah, I was doing OK, I could have probably worked harder, maybe give yourself a six or what have you. Now, that scale is going to be subjective because that's not measured in anything. That's not measured in, in uh, hours that you've put in. And that's the key thing here. The effort is the hour scale. So underneath on the second scale, look back at the work you did again at your GCSEs and think about the levels and use the guide there so if you did 10 say if you did 15 hours of independent study a week so that includes your home learning and anything extra then maybe give yourself a six or a seven so the idea is is for you to think about how much time you're willing to commit um, to your studies really important and then you can do this either with um, reflect on your work for your GCSEs or your own home life at the moment. My big um, frog this weekend was to start on a bedroom that I've been putting off that had disgusting wallpaper on and stripped it. But actually, once I'd eaten that frog, once I got started, it was actually fine. Um, so you can do it for reflect on your GCSEs or you can think about your home life at the moment. What are the jobs that you are really putting off? Um, or what the jobs have you put off and what are the easy things that you think yes that's really good my easy thing would be to go to my greenhouse and do some gardening but I stayed in and I did the wallpaper stripping so think about that and we'll go back to this again and again um, when we start in September is uh, what's your frog what are you putting off because it's not going to go you've got to actually attack that frog not literally but you've got to be able to do that job that you've been putting off moving on to systems this is a scary thought on average over two years of study you will have 260 contact hours there's 260 hours in the classroom um, per a level which if you're doing three a levels or BTEX, um, that's 780 hours 780 hours of notes or um, I don't know handouts or something uh, how do you organize that that is a lot of work to do. And I guess some people are very good at this. Some people can prioritize their work very well. Some are uh, need some guidance. I was gonna say pretty useless. They need some help and, and guidance with this. But research shows that there's a link between levels of organization and the final grades. So that's really important that we step upon this quite quickly. And this is one of the skills that your tutors will work with you um, on myself. So why do we need to be organised? Organisation will allow you to start to see patterns and make links between subjects. For example, there will be some crossover if you're doing psychology, biology and sport, for example, which is very 
um, typical and popular combination. Um, if you can quickly access your notes or start to see where you're overlapping, that will enhance your learning. Um, you make sense of the whole topic and master deeper learning. So if you're in a psychology exam and they touch upon an, uh, an example that then you think, oh, actually, that was mentioned in biology. I can probably throw that into the exam question that will to your examiner um, give you a uh, or show them that you have a deeper level of learning and um, that you've mastered the subject that you are a specialist in that subject rather than keeping thing everything separate um, and it will help you organize the information and keep the deadlines you'll have less anxiety stress and could mean a happier and more relaxed you um, sometimes hold my head in my hands when I see a year 13 with bits of paper everywhere not knowing what to revise and where to do it so let's start the year um, as we mean to go on a levels are managing projects and you can learn how to do this so systems activities we've got one but again, you may want to get used to doing this now. Um, you may have a list of things that your parents have set you to do, uh, which is great, but you will hopefully be able to do this um, in September. And it's a really useful thing to do. You'll see a lot of the year 13s using it when you come in. Um, it's a very well practiced um, system. And basically you have a big A3 sheet or an A4, but A3 is usually easier. You split it up into five columns and you have post-it notes. And on each post-it note, you'll have independent learning that you need to do with the date that it needs to be done by. And it's, it's basically, and some people just have a list of things to do and that's okay, but this is a visual aid and then with the post-it note you keep moving it so if you get it set with two weeks uh, notice uh, to do then you'd obviously put it in the low priority whereas something that's due in tomorrow would be on the extreme priority and you can have things in there personal things as well so it's just organizing and um, prioritizing your life so have a look at that um, if you want to have a go at it with what you're doing at home then that's um, absolutely brilliant the other thing um, that we do is the, the exercise snack, don't binge, the, the weekly review. Um, quite a lengthy sheet to read through, but have a, have a look at it. I like to um, know, <laughs> I refer to it as uh, a bit of a brain, a brain dump. That doesn't sound particularly nice but basically um, you are usually on a Friday, I do it on a Friday um, and what I do is I split, I just, I, I shut myself off for an hour and I review the week um, and I consolidate all my notes from meetings and everything. And then I set myself a new to-do list on the Monday. So that could be, oh, go and check back on a student, go and check with Mr. Smith on something. Um, so one, it gives me a nice relaxing weekend, hopefully, but it just for you and a student concept, it makes you consolidate all of your learning. It gives you questions. Then the following week, you can go back and check with your teacher. Um, and it will also raise questions that you want to ask um, as well and um, it will remind you of any work that's due. It's a good way of organising yourself, it, it relieves again that panic of oh, I've forgotten this and it will keep you um, on track to, to be successful. And we go, we, again we work on that quite a lot when you come into to sick form to get you organised. Practice. Practice is really um, quite hard to explain, so I'll, I'll try and do this um, in, in the simplest way. So how does practice differ from effort? And the answer is practice represents what learners do with the time they put into studies, not the how much of study, but the how. So I get quite a few students, probably in year 12 before they've mastered this, coming in and say, I don't understand it, Selena. I'm doing 20 to 30 hours a week and I'm still only getting two out of 10 on my essay or I'm just getting it completely wrong, but I am putting the effort in. So once we've unpicked that, yes, you are doing that amount of hours. Um, we go back to actually the practice. How are you, what are you spending that time doing? Is it effective? Is it valuable time um, spent? And hopefully this next questionnaire will get you to start thinking about the skills you need to be practicing as a sick former. So practice does not always make perfect, but perfect practice makes um, perfect.
bit of a mouthful that. So first one I want you to do is to have a go at and again um, I've tried to, to do it for you to reflect on your GCSEs. I know some of you would have put that experience behind you but this is the best way that we can do it at the moment and again we will go over it again when you come into A levels. So um, there's two examples there, student one and student two. Both, you can imagine, are academically good. They're both doing um, the same subjects. Student one does 15 hours revision, pretty decent time, all reading through the class notes. So he does one type of activity. Student two, you can read through, does a range of activities. And he's what he's doing is he's exercising his three different types of skills. He's doing content, skills and feedback. So he's um, mastering the content by um, reading, consolidating his notes and understanding. He's then checking out his skills by practicing exam questions and timing himself, which is really important. Um, and then he's getting feedback from teachers and experts to be able to enhance his skills and to develop further. So Student one only does the content revision, while student two does all three stages and then takes time off. Which is going to be more successful? Student two is working smarter because he's practicing the right skills. What I'd like you to do is have a go at the revision questionnaire, um, thinking about one subject that you took at GCSE and just again be honest with yourselves. So what kind of skills did you do? Always sometimes or never. So read through um, the quotes on the left hand side. So if you did flashcards all the time for that one subject, then obviously you tick the always box. If you never did them, you tick the never box. You will see that after each statement, there is a C, an S or an F, which would indicate the skills that go with content, as I've just explained, skills and feedback. A good A-level student will have a range of C's, S's and F's to be able to get the right level and the right practice in. Hopefully that makes sense. Email me if not. <laughs> um, the next one, know the skills, is probably something you can't do until you get in um, and start in your subject. And that's absolutely fine, but I, I included it in there just so you can see some of the extension tasks that we'll do. Um, and for each subject you will do, you will have, you need to be able to say to the teacher, what skills have I got to gain um, to get an A grade? Um, and you can write them around. There's usually about seven skills um, on the assessment objectives. And it's basically a colouring process. So this is definitely a banister job you can colour in. Um, you can colour in as you get more practised and confident about it. So when all of that area of the circle is full, that means you're confident at it and you've practiced it and that's brilliant. And then another thing that you may well have done with GCSE is a graphic organiser. So whether you use mind maps, comparison tables, flowcharts, data graphs, um, you are basically engaging with the subject, you're reorganising it so it becomes knowledge. So all of the notes that your teachers give you, and again, we'll be doing a session on making notes later when you first start in September. Um, it, it's a personal preference of how you organise all of that knowledge. What we are keen to do is that you keep up to date with those notes as you probably did at GCSE so it's not a big rush at the end to make your revision notes um, because that just leads to anxiety stress and ah um, I've just given you an example there of using um, a graphic organizer in the form of metaphor so I've used a tree as an example so what key so think of a topic new or old of your choice so it could be um, I don't know global warming for example so that could be the what key information forms the strength so what are the key points for global warming and then as you a bit like a mind map as you go out what underlying information makes the root so what gives it the the um, substance for that subject what are the important branches and then the twigs and the leaves are the kind of extra bits on the outside that you would definitely include in an exam question at a level but you've got to get the trunk and the roots and the branches first and then think of other examples of metaphors that, that you could use um, yeah, it'll be quite interesting to see what, what you come back with. 
And then finally, we go on to my um, favourite one of the VESPA model, the attitude. So what makes up an academic attitude? Gosh, if I had the answer to that, I would be um, probably rich. However, we do know your process of learning, the presence or absence of a growth mindset, if it's a positive one, then that is a long way to go towards your success. So your positivity, your response to challenge or difficulty, um, and that is hard. Um, at the moment, you're going through a hard time, um, and I absolutely congratulate all of you for, for acting as you have, um, and same with the year 13s, um, how they've responded to, to the challenge or the difficulty. Your resilience. So when you do get that bad grade and you've put that effort in, what do you do? Do you crumble in a heap? Do I find you in the sick form kitchen crying um, and sobbing? Or do we actually think, OK, that's not very good, but actually I'm going to go and make an appointment with my teacher and ask, what can I do to make it better next time? No teachers they shouldn't be teaching if they're like this, but no teachers will get any kind of pleasure out of telling you that you've done badly. Teachers that you will have will um, give feedback to you, but there is nothing wrong with going back to that teacher and saying, can you give me more detailed feedback, please? How do you measure your attitude? And again, that's really difficult because there's nothing really to measure this. And we work a lot with you about having that confidence, accepting that you will have down days. But how do you pick yourself up after that? A successful person will be able to reflect on their weaknesses, on the bits that they did wrong, but you'd be able to improve from that. So the various ones here to, to have a go at. And this is this is a great one. And we usually have really great fun in the centre doing this. So I only have to go into the centre um, and you not so much now because I, I, I make sure it stopped. But um, certainly before we we started with the VESPA model, there used to be lots of students that used to say, oh, oh, I'm no good at this or oh, and it was all negative. And actually, um, they're not good for anybody because you then pick up on it, somebody else's negativity and negative thoughts we know doesn't help with success. So I've just given you some examples that I hear in the centre or I have heard it in the past. And we usually go around the room so you can discuss it with your friends, family. Um, obviously, if it's friends, socially distanced, and just to see see if you can rephrase them to be more positive. And I'll give you an example. So I, I gave this example to um, a, a student a couple of years ago, and I said, right, so uh, if you came to me and said, the teacher doesn't like me, how could you rephrase that into a positive way? And he thought about it and he said, the teacher doesn't like me yet. <laughs> and um, he's absolutely right. That is a more positive way of saying it. I'm not quite sure whether he got it completely right. Um, but, you know, it, it's having that positive mindset um, which will help you. And at the bottom, I've just put there, write and discuss some other examples you may think of you of, that you hear yourself saying. I think the most popular has been, I'm no good at this. Um, so think of how you can say that in a positive way. The change curve, again, um, based on a, a famous a curve, which you psychologists will, will soon discover, uh, the Kubler-Ross curve. And it's it's practiced in a lot of businesses, in education. And I think it, it summarizes your journey in sixth form very, very well. So what I'd like you to do is to just guess and mark on the chart in any way or whichever way you, you would like to. And just think about how you or where you would be on this chart. Just put a dot or something where you would be at the start of year 12, at the end of the first term, uh, year 12, start of the summer term and so on and so forth. And then we, we're going to have a look at that when you come back in just to see where you are. But this is a journey uh, that you will take whilst you're in sick form. The vampire test, this is where I take a deep breath and think, oh gosh, I hope I'm not going to upset um, many of you or change your friendship groups. But friendship groups do change um, in post-16 education. You're all going to have different visions. You've been on a little bit of a treadmill, as I've said, up to year 11. And now is the time for you to really branch out and have confidence in yourself of what you do want to do after your education, whether you want to go on to higher education, whether you want to go into the world of work, whether you want to travel. And what you'll find is sometimes your friends that don't believe that's the right 
decision, they can start to be quite negative. Um, you may find that suddenly some of your friends aren't engaged as you and they could be lazy. And what we do know is that if you're surrounding yourself by negative people, lazy people, it can have a very negative effect. If you're surrounding yourself by hardworking people and positive people, again, it can have a really positive effect. So friendship groups do change in, in sick form and it's quite interesting to, to observe them. So what I want you to do is to think about five people um, that you spend a lot of your time with. Now that could be five friends, it could be um, relatives, it could be work colleagues, and ask yourselves those five questions. And if some of those are no, or a lot of them are no, then I don't want you to suddenly dump your friends. You could try and help them and say, do you know what? Actually, that's a really negative thing you've just said. Maybe try and rephrase it positively. Um, and again, I, as I say, I do take a little bit of a sharp intake of breath because I don't want there any to be upset. But again, we don't want you to get zapped into this negativity. Um, if you can, one, be more positive, move away from those negative friends and help them as well. And then finally, the, the last attitude activity is one that I've asked you to do before. I think it was in session one. And this is, it, it is a bit of fun, but it, again, if you watch the clip that I sent you on um, Grey's Anatomy, you, you will find that it is a very well-known well, well known researched um, stand tall attitude pose. And we call it the power, power pose, power pose one or power pose two. So again, have a go at it again. Um, I think it really helps at the moment and relate it back to famous sports people as I've put on the top there. Um, they, they do the, these posing. And when I usually do this in with the sixth formers in year 12, and we all have negative thoughts sometimes. So this is a really good um, activity to do. I usually say to them and I get somebody to demonstrate it. I said, so think of your teachers uh, in HCC who naturally stands tall and does power posing all the time. Now I'm going to leave that one with you because um, those of you who haven't been to HCC, and I know there are a few of you that are following this programme, uh, you won't know who I'm talking about, but you will soon realise when you come. And the ones that do have this certain person will know exactly who I'm talking about. And we usually have a bit of a giggle about that. Okay, and it's not Mr. Smith. I got him to, to pose um, for this one. And he's just there demonstrating on Tabletop Mountain um, that the uh, the effect of power posing, and I, and I think he sends one to, to the sick form every every year he goes on holiday. He won't be doing that this year. Um, but again, in with the staff, you, you would quite often find because the VESPA system has been integrated into to all of the sick form teaching, you may then just find, come on, let's stand up and do it, do a power pose. Let's have a, a little bit of a deep breath. We can do this and you can all, all do it. So just to summarise, um, this is a learning um, process um, that we would have done would have visited this in the time that you spent with me in transition. We probably wouldn't have done all of these tasks. We'd have dipped in and, and dipped out of them. But if I can start you thinking about the mindset now, and there are lots of other tasks. So if these don't suit you, we can go over some others when you start sixth form. Um, but these are just the easiest ones I thought that you could have a go at um, and, and have a look at. If anybody really is that keen, um, you can get the A-Level Mindset book um, from Amazon. Amazon. It's a bit like my Bible, um, and it and it does. It's a very good read. Those of you who are going into education, um, wants to be a teacher, it is a really good book um, to get you thinking about how students think um, and how you can change their mindset. And it is, as I said in the in the booklet at the start, it is a way of thinking. Um, and certainly, the the teachers that have uh, adopted it within their lesson and the tutors, you will often see them referring it to it, um, as I do in, in, in your own life, about what is my vision, am I, my effort, am I putting my effort into my work life, systems, practice, attitude, how can I be smarter to get the end success that I want to get. So this is just the start and um, the aim is if you've got to the end and you haven't done any of the exercises, you can go back to any of the slides and hear me talk about it again if you're on 
unsure what to do. So good luck, have a go. Um, there is no right or wrong way you're thinking, but hopefully it will get you thinking like an A-level student before we see you in September. Any questions, just let me know and um, good luck.